Novice here with Liz Wade. Hello, Liz. Hi, Adam. Today, we are going to be having a real conversation about the Spotlight program, Five Tips for Growing Old Better. If you haven't had a chance to read the program or listen to the program, you can visit our website where you can listen and read along, or you can find it here on YouTube or listen to it where you get your podcasts. Um, you can also listen to it in an advanced version if you want to challenge yourself or if you're ready for that. Um, and so all those links will be below the video. Make sure you check those out if you haven't listened to the program already. If you have, uh, and maybe this is your first time, this is our conversation program. So we have our classic program, which is very slow. We have our advanced program, which is that same content, but a little faster. And then we have this conversation program, which is where Liz and I are talking about uh, the topic of the program. So before we dive in, Liz, can you give us a summary about what is Five Tips for Growing Old Better all about? I would love to, Adam. Um, first, I want to say that this is the final program in our Tips for Healthy Living series. So of course, we have um, we started this series with um, how to have a healthy pregnancy. Then we went on to a healthy child's first year, and then some tips for uh, healthy childhood, and then tips for uh, healthy teens. And then uh, we just had um, tips for like a healthy adult life and recovering from injury. And then here we are at the at the end of life, um, growing older. Um, so we are past like real, you know, we're past like right. children and and um, getting and so to the really late years. Those are going to be in a playlist, correct? Oh, they are in a playlist. Oh, yes. Wonderful. So um, they're already there and you can check out all of those programs in order or you can check out this one and go backwards. I don't know, like Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did want to say that um, this is uh, the end of this series. And so um, we have we have been running this series for a while. And I hope that that is really helpful, um, really, to cover any area of life that you're in. So um, this program is about really those later years and growing old better and making um, making those last years count. Uh, and it starts with a story of probably a woman our age who is uh, watching her mother get older and then uh, begins to suffer from dementia, which mm. we also have a different program about. Um, but uh, so she's having trouble remembering things. And um, uh, how, how would you describe that, Adam? I'm yeah, not doing a very good job at describing um, you can't do the things that you normally would do yeah. um, at, for yourself. So this this uh, woman is watching her mother grow old, and she decides for herself that she is going to do the best job growing old that she can so that she stays healthy longer. So um, I think that's a thing that a lot of people think about, honestly, maybe seeing their parents' um, age and uh, are they able to do fewer and fewer things. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, this program then goes through five tips and how uh, it explains them a little bit and how you can use those five tips. Right. So the first tip is a really simple one. And I think honestly, um, as I was going through this program, uh, I think this was in every single healthy living program. Yeah, so it, um, the it, first tip is to drink enough water. Yeah, there you go, Adam. You're see, you're starting to be your healthy I'm, oldest self I'm right healthy. now. <laughs> well, it is amazing when you. I think um, getting enough sleep and drinking enough water are like yes unequivocal goods. Like they will not hurt you. You might have to use the bathroom a little more, but yeah. um, those are two things that are just yes. always good. Right, exactly. Well, and something I learned in this program is that uh, when you are older, because of course your body is made up of so much water, it's something like 65 or 70 percent water right. uh, that, you know, is in between your cells and in your blood and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but as you get older, uh, then the water, there's less water in you. Maybe that's where right. wrinkles come from. Do you think so? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got plenty of wrinkles even when I'm... Uh... Even when I'm drunk yeah, enough I'm water. I'm drinking water right now. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> so 
So, uh, and that um, older people's older older people don't feel as thirsty. So right. there's two things, you know, going against you. You don't have as much water in your body, and also um, you just don't have the urge to drink as much. Right. Well, and the second tip kind of uh, could work against the first tip. So the second tip is to spend time outside. And if it's a very hot day, uh, you might need to drink even more water. But that's not exactly <laughs> what this tip is about. There's been research that shows that uh, it helps people to stay active, to keep their bodies healthy. But it also... Um, just being out among trees in fresh air, um, those things have a a remarkable effect on people's health and happiness. And I think, right, uh, you know, for you and I who've had, maybe had to spend more time inside because of the 2020 pandemic, we definitely know that like getting outside is good for your health. Well, and I think um, even I have been hearing stories of how even um, older people who it, in the States, it's very common for um, older people to live in an, in an old folks home, we might say, or a, um, a nursing home yeah. where uh, they maybe have their own room, but other people take care of them, nurses and things. Um, and since the pandemic, when they weren't allowed to go outside, actually many more old people, older people died, even mm -hmm. from just loneliness or not being able to go outside their rooms or experience the outside. So um, that alone, I think, is a good example of how going outside, even if it's just, even if you can't move, maybe right. just having your wheelchair outside in the fresh air and a little bit of sun, because you don't exactly. want, you don't want too much sun, right? right? Um, but being outside and just listening to the birds and the maybe the the breeze rustling through the tree leaves, um, that that is really important. Yeah. So I think I think that was a really interesting one that it, you don't even have to be like on your bicycle, you know, going ten miles a day or whatever. Yeah. Um, you can just be sitting outside. Yeah, just being outside is valuable. Yeah. Okay. So the third tip was uh, thinking about the past in a healthy way. And so that one, that one I think is a little bit tricky, especially for, well, I will say I tend to have maybe a more negative way of thinking. I'm maybe more of a pessimist. Uh, so I, I have a hard time thinking, oh, wow, that was, that was a good thing that happened or, um, you know, in the future, good things are going to happen. Yeah. So I think, um, the, the advice in this program is to be able to look back at the things that you did in life mm -hmm. and know that you did the best you could or right. the most you could. Um, and so then you can look at your life with a fullness, knowing that you didn't have a lot of regrets. Right. I think that's, um, that's 100 percent correct, because it's not no one gets to live the exact life that they want. No. And even if they do, they could reach old age and be like, no, oh, that wasn't what I expected. But I think what, right. it, what they're trying to get at with this point is how do you look back on your life and make meaning? How do you connect the, the pieces, even those pieces that weren't good, right. to give meaning to the overall life that you've lived? And I right. think that's, that's, uh, that's something you can do at any age. Um, yes. And so, but you could also come back and, and if you can't find that meaning, if you can't make that meaning, you, you, you kind of get those regrets and that despair, right? Yeah. But Okay, so I will tell you, I read an amazing, uh, <clears throat> this is how you know this is a real conversation, because Adam doesn't know what I'm about to say. I rarely do, Liz. <laughs> um, I read an amazing Twitter thread this morning about, a, it was an obituary, mm -hmm. about a very old lady who died. So an obituary is just a, an announcement of a person's death. Yep. Um, and she was, in her younger days, she was a very uh, rich young woman hmm. whose um, father founded like Pacific North Gas Company or something like that. Okay. So she was she was very rich. Um, she was, uh, and then she had this great life, you know, on boats and and parties Could and do things. whatever she wanted. Yeah, she got married very young, and she had ten kids wow. between like age twenty and maybe like thirty. Okay, and 
Um, then at age 60, so, and also she would, I mean, she would take her families on elaborate vacations. They would, they owned an island. They would take a boat there. They would travel to Vienna for the week or whatever. Um, again, very lavish lifestyle. She did whatever she wants. She was very headstrong. She decided, um, for her 60th birthday that she was going to become a nun. And so um, when she became a nun, she joined a, a group of nuns who like live in in their their building, their right. nunnery or wherever. Um, and they don't Chicago. have a lot of possessions. No, she had gave up every possession she had. She could not touch anyone in her family ever again. Like she lived in this. She could she only talks for like half an hour a day. Otherwise, she's silent and praying most most days. Wow. Um, she sleeps on, slept on um, a bed. It was just a piece of wood with a very thin mattress. She didn't have any possessions. Um, and that, to me, oh, so, so she was describing why she did this to her children. like, um, And she told them, I lived my first 30 years for me. I lived my next 30 years for you. And then I lived my last 30 years for God. I don't remember wow. what exactly she said, or for faith. Yeah. Um, and so, or for other people. Um, but uh, this to me, I, why would, it was such an interesting question, right? Yeah. Because she's near the end of her life. She did die just recently um, at that convent. That's what it's called, the convent. Yeah. Um, as this nun who had never touched any of her 12 grandchildren, had mm. um, only, had never, you know, like in the last... 30 or 40 years that she was there had never touched any of her children. Um, she never, you know, she didn't get to go on these vacations yeah. or do any of these things anymore. It makes me, um, you know, thinking about this program and about regret. Uh, are there regrets in her life? Like, did she know. regret maybe her first years? Was she, did she decide to live those last 30 years at the convent because um, she regretted all of that lavish spending. You know, she maybe, asking for maybe for life is just choosing your regrets. Yeah. Right. Like you, you can work, work and make a lot of money, but you miss out with your family or you can spend time with your family and not have as much money. And, and, and maybe you, we all have some kind of regret about what could have been. Yeah. So anyway, uh, maybe you don't have to make as, as uh, bold or uh, strong of a choice as this lady, where you just you know give up all family contact, um, but yeah, looking at your life as a whole and doing what you doing what you love or doing what uh, yeah, you I, can. I would encourage if anybody has left a uh, left their family and joined a convent, uh, please put <laughs> a comment in the. I don't think it's a common story, Adam. <laughs> I'm I'm sure that if they have abandoned their family, they're probably not uh, readily spending a lot of time on YouTube. No. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. we, can, we can move on to our next tip. So number tip number four uh, is uh, give to your community, which of course could be you've worked and you have a lot of money and you want to uh, donate money to those places in your community that you care about. And of course, your community can be the people around you, but it could be a worthy cause all the way around the world, right? Um, but right. you can also give um, your knowledge. You've learned a lot of things about whatever you happen to have learned about. Yeah. Uh, it'll be different for you and me and everybody who's watching. Um, but you can use those and give them to, uh, you know, give that wisdom to your grandchildren, or you can invest in helping out in a community center or helping out in a biz if maybe you've had a business. I don't know. It can be any yeah. number of ways. You have to think of it yourself. But um, yeah, I know there. I mean, there are lots of uh, older people, right, who continue to give to the community by volunteering. Yeah. I know that uh, in here in our city, um, there was a big vaccination clinic hmm. where many older people, they, you know, maybe didn't have something to do during the day and they would volunteer their time at the clinic. Right. So they would, you know, volunteer their time and make sure that people here were vaccinated. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of ways that you can give back. Yeah. And that also helps you make meaning to your life. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And get and you outside. Okay. 
and get and you what? outside. And maybe yeah. if you drink a, yeah. bring a bottle of water, you and can do you with other people, right? So <laughs> right. it's not just uh, the beauty of nature, but uh, connecting with other people. Exactly. So our final tip was one, the one I thought that was the most interesting, um, and that yeah. is to keep learning. And not only to just uh, keep learning by, I don't know, picking up a book or whatever, but it's the act of choosing to learn new things, right? Because right? um, it's very easy, even for, even for younger people, for teens, for everybody, um, to fall into a pattern, right? You maybe eat the same thing every day, you go to the same places, you um, read the same things, um, all of that, all of that consistency can give people a sense of um, comfort, but yeah. it also can mean that you're not learning new things. You're only in your pattern. And so I thought it was an interesting thing to choose to learn new things um, as a way to keep your mind uh, fresh. Yeah, there's no reason to stop learning and growing, right? Like that, just because you reach a certain numbers number of years. Uh, Number of candles on your birthday cake doesn't mean you're like, yeah. okay, I'm done. Um, <laughs> right. So no, no matter how old you are, uh, you can keep discovering things about the world. Yeah. There was a great quote in the program, which I did want to read. Because, um, you know, sometimes I like to, I like yeah. to share. Um, I don't remember who, who said the quote. Um, Anderson. Somebody Anderson. Maybe I should have prepared this a little bit better, but... Um, I think it's a she. She says, one of the best ways to stay active as you get older is to always choose to learn new things. The least interesting older people I know are those who find a comfortable place and stop. And I'm sure we all know people like that, like maybe a grandparent who has, you know, is like kind of maybe grumpy and they're like, no, I like, I like this TV show or I like this bench in the park or whatever. And I don't want to do anything different. Uh, she says, they do the same things. They have the same conversations. They express the same opinions. Choose to learn something totally new every week or every month. There is nothing like being bad at something to wake you up and shake you out of your understanding. And when you start to get good at it, it can make you feel as excited as a six-year-old. So I thought that was interesting to, to be like, to try to be bad at something. Yeah. Right? I like that. Yeah, I'll bet you do. I that like. I, like a I'm a big fan Adam of sort of quote. I, I'm a big fan of learning and being bad. I always have to. I, I I was just explaining to my son the other day that you have to do things three times before you mm. get you can do it. Like you have to make it, and you have to make it again, and then you have to make it again because um, nobody's good at things the first time. Yeah. But, um, so I would I, go ahead. I was going to say, I tell my kids the same thing in a different way. I, you know, they'll say, well, I'm not good at that or I can't do that. And I always say, how do you get better at something? And then they're like, oh, practice. You gotta yes. Do you got to yes, do it practice. bad about a few times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to keep learning. So I would encourage if you're, maybe you're not an old person watching this and you think, well, this doesn't apply to me. That does. So what do you, besides English. Write in the mm -hmm. comments what you are learning or what you would be, what is that thing that you, you maybe haven't even started learning, but you would be really bad at? Like, what do you wish yeah. you would learn? And uh, put a comment in here, or you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter and do the same thing there. Um, if you haven't visited our website, which is spotlightenglish.com, please do that. There's a lot of great resources there yeah. um, that aren't on YouTube. You can follow along. We got some pictures. It's a lot of fun. Um, and of course, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. We have a lot of content. It's very easy to, to miss a video and um, we don't want you to do that. Um, and yeah, join us for our next Real Conversation. And until then, just keep Listening, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.